Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Alpha Wave Semi with Mike Klimpa. We're going to talk today about optical interconnectivity at 224 gig. Mike, what's changing on optical interconnectivity? Why do we need so much bandwidth? So we need so much bandwidth to keep up um, with AI and all the compute that's going on in the data centers. And it wasn't very long ago when um, everything was fine with just optical modules and passive copper DACs. But now, as speeds increase, losses are also increasing exponentially. And we've had to shift from you know, pure copper to different flavors of retimed uh, optics to fit different power profiles and different reach characteristics. Let's dig into this. Sure. Mike, what are we looking at? So these are two different architectures for Ethernet connectivity. Um, this would be just like a switch ASIC to a retimed optical module. And this is another switch ASIC going to a passive copper DAC. So, you know, at 100 gig or earlier rate Ethernets, um, this loss from the host ASIC to the DSP would be about 16 dB. That's the link budget. And for a over passer, passive copper DAC from one ASIC to another, it would be about 40 dB. And so that was at 100 gig per lane. But now when we make the jump to 200 gig per lane, just this reach alone is 32 dB. Um, and you know they usually keep the max reach of these long reach 30s to 40 dB. So this is about 32 dB and this is still 40 dB. So even though this is still 40 dB, um, the reach of this passive copper cable has decreased from about 7 meters at 25 gig all the way down to 1 meter at 224 gig. Where does optical fit in here? So they've kept the long reach link budget to be 40 dB from ASIC to ASIC die, um, but that length, the reach of this passive DAC copper cable has shrunk from about 7 meters at 25 gig down to 1 meter at 224 gig. So obviously, you know, the distances within racks isn't really changing. The, the, the data center architectures are not changing very much. Um, and so we need to get that reach back. And really the only way to do it is to go optical. Optical comes with its own set of challenges though, right? It's faster, it's lower power, but you really have to make sure that even with thermal issues that it doesn't start passing by the filters. The, the power hungry component of an optics module is this DSP. It is retiming the signal from the host ASIC um, and kind of conditioning it uh, to travel you know, up to hundreds of kilometers depending on the, the optical reach type. Um, so the DSP is, is consuming a lot of power. And so what we've been seeing is different implementations of optics modules. So we, so not only are there just purely retimed optics modules, but now we have LPOs, which are linear pluggable optics, and LROs, which are linear retimed optics, um, or sometimes it's called RTLR. Um, so the LPO just completely strips this DSP out of the optics module, and so there is just in electrical to optical and then an optical to electrical function on either side. What's the advantage of that? So the advantage is you get the reach of the optics um, with not as much of a power hit um, when compared to a DSP optic. So uh, you know if you're just replacing one optic you probably that doesn't really make sense but uh, when you think of these AI data centers that have you know hundreds of thousands to probably you know looking for millions of connections um, the difference in saving 15 watts just compounds exponentially. Um, and so, and you're able to put more compute in there. Um, and so really that's the, the motivation for going towards LPOs, which is completely no DSP in them, or LROs, which only has a retimer on the transmit side um, and nothing on the far end host side. Um, but the trade-off is this ASIC SERTI's complexity um, just goes through the roof in terms of you know, you could get away at 100 gig, right? They, I said it was about 16 dB. Um, so you can, you know, use a pretty um, efficient CERTES to, to make that link. Um, in the past, a lot of this was being done in a data center between racks of, of servers as well as between uh, racks of servers and SSDs on uh, way across the data center. Is it starting to come out to the board, onto the chip, and into the package? So, yeah, so an LPO is actually kind of a natural progression towards a co-packaged optics architecture. Um, it, it's all the same elements. You're just pulling that 
electro optical conversion from that you know monolithic big ASIC up to the front panel. So a lot of end users actually prefer these LPOs or LROs because it's a you know it's a mature robust ecosystem. If one optics module fails, you just unplug it and you plug a brand new one in. Um, if something within this co-package optics ASIC fails, you need to pull out the whole ASIC and, and you know, replace it, which probably isn't going to happen. And you're just probably going to replace the whole switch. What are the, how fast can this go? Where's the limit? So we're investigating this at 224 gig. Um, and we're already thinking about 448 gig. And, you know, it's only natural that um, with as these electrical losses are stacking up, uh, inside these servers and switches, um, these optics are gonna get closer and closer to that ASIC. Um, probably eventually it's gonna end up as optics, but there's such a strong, robust ecosystem, like I said, of these pluggables that, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be, people are gonna be going to co-package optic, kicking and streaming. They're gonna to try to be using these pluggables, whether it's passive DAX, if it's possible, um, LPOs or LROs, any sort of flavor of optical retimer um, you know, in complete DSPs, th those are probably going to live for as long as possible. Um, you know, all the end users want um, manageability and interoperability, and that's really what's driving all these different optical interfaces for 224 gig and eventually 448 gig. Well, can you do more of these in parallel as well? Is it just one signal that you're you're dealing with, or can they possibly do multiple signals and put them all together? Yeah, that really just depends on the the flavor of the optics. Um, there's coherent optics, which which crams uh, a bunch of different wavelengths onto the same fiber, or you know there's multimode optics, which is you know a single wavelength um, through a fiber, or there's just parallel fibers uh, coming out with some you know FR types of wavelengths. So um, it really just you know, it depends on what kind of optical engine you have inside the module. So this is the best path forward to terabits per second, right? Yes, it, for, for, for any sort of, you know, interconnectivity reach perspective, that's, you know, not kind of something die to die or anything. Um, if you need the reach, you're likely going to need to use some sort of optics, whether it's fully retimed, half retimed, or unretimed, that kind of remains to be seen. Um, that's really dependent on your certes. And that's where Alpha Wave's kind of expertise shines is, um, you know, we have a complete digital backend where you can kind of dial up the equalization or dial it back down, depending on how uh, the complexity of your channel. And then our flexible um, clocking architecture enables you to um, also kind of tune up or down that FEC, the, the forward error correction, um, if you're very latency sensitive or if you kind of don't care and you just want it, you want it to make sure um, that it gets you know delivered from point A to point B. Uh, without fail, then you'll kind of turn up the FEC, or if you can kind of, you know, these AI applications really want as low latency as possible, and so you can really turn that down as long as your your, your bit error rate is, is good enough. You made it sound easy. Where do engineers typically run into problems? It's definitely not easy at all. Um, you know, I think we, we, we're pushing the limits at 112 gig, and so I think it's all just, you know, buying every single inch of, of optimization and efficiency at 224 gig. Everything needs to be co-optimized together. You know, it, it's no longer just, um, here's my ASIC, here's my 112 gig certes, um, make it work. You know, it, we're really seeing complete engineered links, um, you know, from, from the certes throughout the system, throughout the channel. Everything is just being co-optimized now to squeeze every inch of margin out of these systems. One last quick question here. What are the difference between LPOs, LROs, and RTLR? So LROs and RTLR are the same device. I think they're just kind of in a marketing identity crisis, um, depending on you know what vendor came up with the term first. But it's all this acronym soup is you know between LROs, TROs, RTLR. It's all the same. It just means that there is a retimer on the near end transmitter, and it's just a linear receiver on the far end. Um, linear pluggable optics, like I said, you just completely remove that DSP right there on both sides. Um, and you know, the, the classic DSP optics modules have these DSP retimers on both sides. And the, the kind of the trade-off between all these different options um, is power versus manageability and kind of just support for interoperability. Um, DSPs, you know, you can, you know, you, you can just plug it into any port and it really should work. 
Um, LROs probably need a little more massaging, finessing to get a solid interoperable link. Um, but it, it, it's for sure achievable. You know, AlphaWave Semi has demonstrated interoperability over LROs and LPOs at uh, live trade shows. Um, and the final kind of option, the, the lowest power consumption, but probably heaviest lift for widespread support is LPOs. Um, and that's, you know, you really need a very sophisticated sturdies on both sides, um, very tunable. And like I said, it's kind of a um, sidestep from co-packaged optics. So it requires very intricate tuning on both the transmitter side and the receiver side. Mike Klempa, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you so much.